Modern power kites have become safer and more versatile, largely due to D-Power systems. This tutorial explains all of the D-Power systems on a modern power kite. The ability to power or depower your kite while flying it is actually its ability to change angle compared to the airflow, known as angle of attack. If your kite lines up with the airflow, it will barely deflect it and won't pull you as much. If the kite has a larger angle of attack, then the wind is deflected and the kite pulls harder. It is important to note, however, that if the angle of attack is too great, you start to lose power. Too much angle of attack makes the kite fly sluggishly around the wind window and can even cause the kite to fly backwards, known as backstalling. The largest and quickest control over your kite's angle comes from the bar. When the bar is pulled in, the steering lines tense, increasing the kite's angle of attack. When the bar is out, the steering lines loosen, reducing the kite's angle and power. This is why students are trained to push the bar away when confused or out of control. Many students unfortunately begin with the opposite instinct, since panic makes you want to grip on the bar. As well as the bar, you can adjust the kite's angle using the D-Power strap. Basically, this system works by adjusting the length of the center lines. When you shorten the center lines, the steering lines loosen, giving less power. When you extend the center lines, the steering lines tense which can increase the power you feel from the kite. The D-Power strap isn't designed to give on-the-go adjustments like the bar, but it is helpful for trimming your setup. For example, here the kiter is leaning forward to reach the bar. This is spoiling their upwind stance. Shortening the D-Power rope means the bar can sit closer as you ride. On some designs, you may find your D-Power strap below the bar. Or, you may even have two separate tabs. But this still works on the same principle. The Power tab will extend the center lines. The D-Power tab will shorten the center lines. The final way to alter the angle of the kite is by using the different connection points that join your lines to the kite. Typically, you will find three knots to choose from when connecting your steering lines to the kite. Attaching to the first knot slightly extends the steering lines for less power. Attaching to the third knot or last knot slightly shortens the steering lines for more power. There could also be multiple connection points to choose from on the center lines. In this case, the first knot extends the center lines for more power. The last knot shortens the center lines for less power. Most kites are designed to work well on the middle settings. Although, it can be hard for beginners to notice if their setup and rigging are optimal. Generally speaking, when the bar is pulled in straight, the steering line should become tense, but the kite shouldn't stall or steer. When the bar is pushed out, the steering line should become slack. It is common for people to make rigging mistakes in light wind. Because the wind is light, they decide to set up the kite for the most power. These settings give the most angle of attack possible. However, 
Too much angle of attack slows the kite as you try to maneuver it. And in light wind, make the kite liable to backstall. Using some D power, however, helps the leading edge fly forward quickly. The kite can then be steered deeper into the wind window to build power. In strong wind, it may help a little to rig for less power before you launch. But bear in mind this doesn't make a huge difference in strong wind. Full D power will not allow you to use a kite that is too big for the wind speed. I hope this tutorial helps you understand your kite's D-Power systems. Subscribe for further tutorials.